Crystal here, and this is going to be the first video in a series of videos. I have a couple subscribers that want to dabble into getting to soap, so I told them I would do a how-to video all the way from the beginning to the end on how to make a soap. So the first thing you want to do when you want to make a soap is to line your mold. You want to get a piece of freezer paper. Freezer paper can be found in the aisle where the saran wrap and the Reynolds wrap and stuff like that is of your major grocery stores. Some smaller grocery stores might not have it, but I know like our big grocery store, which is Food City and Walmart has it. And it just says freezer paper and it's in a blue container. It's about this long and you're going to tear off a piece and have it long enough to reach down this edge and to reach down this edge and I'm hoping you guys can see the entire thing and you want the shiny side up so the first thing you're going to do is make sure it reaches on both edges this way and that way Then you're going to take your finger and you're going to go along the crease go along the crease same over here you're going to go along the crease and go around the crease. Now we're going to go around the creases on this edge and just crease it and outline that middle of that paper. Get it and outline it. Alright? Let's move our mold to the side. Now what you want to do is you have two crease marks. You have one on the outside and one on the inside. I want you to fold your paper up to that inside mark just to where that inside mark is meeting right here and then you're going to fold just above it and make a crease on both ends take it turn it around find that inner crease mark go just above it and make a crease that way and a crease that way now you're going to take it long ways and remember the crease we had right there you're going to bring it up till you find the crease and you're going to crease it that way. While you have your paper like this, we're going to go ahead and cut. You want to cut along these flaps right here. So going lengthwise, I'm going to cut down this one. And then you're going to take some of the paper off. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, some of the paper off over here. So let's cut a piece off of it. Same thing over here, cut along this crease mark, and then take some of the paper off, and have it over there. Now we're going to fold our paper in half, just right there. These, these two side ones doesn't have to be folded, we're just going to fold the middle. Now we're going to turn it around, we're going to find our crease mark again and fold it up, fold just above the crease mark and make a crease. Take it out. Now take your scissors and you're going to cut long ways again. So long ways this way and then cut some of the paper off and then long ways again this way and cut some of the paper off. So now you should have a piece of paper that kind of looks like this with the two folded parts in the middle and these can come in if they want to. You're going to bring this side up to this side and kind of meet in the middle. Now you're going to take your mold and you're going to set it right down in the middle of where you made those marks. Now rub your hand along the inside of it. Turn it around. Rub your hand along the inside again. Now you should have two flaps. See, I can do it this way to where you can see. See, there's a flap here and there's a flap here. What you're going to do is you're going to cut down this crease and you're going to cut down this crease. So let's cut down that crease all the way till you reach the mold right here and cut down the other one. Now what you want to do 
is go in and bring that inner that inner piece of paper that we had folded and fold it down you can cut off the excess I like to cut off the excess just like that and now we're going to tape it just like that see how it's taped all right now we're going to turn it around and you're going to do the same thing you're going to make sure it's folded over and that's folded over and we're going to cut along these creases this crease right down here and then this crease right here make sure it's straight all right now you're going to take your middle piece bring it up and fold it over this is where I like to cut off the access and you're going to tape it down just like that see how it's taped down all right now you're going to come over and you're going to move have press your finger along the inside of the mold on both sides and you're going to fold it over make sure it's creased in the middle of the crease down here fold it over this side might be a little bit too long so we're going to cut some off and then we're going to tape it down so we'll put a piece of tape there piece of tape here and a piece of tape here now we're going to turn it around and do the exact same thing oh there's something in there on this side find your crease make sure it's creased on the inside and then bring fold it down to where it comes over the edge it's a little too long so we're going to take take some of it off and then we're going to tape it down let's put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here all right now our our uh, mold our mold is lined as you can see that one needs to there we go it's lined all in the middle and this is the very first step into soaping so before you get your oils together before you get your lime mix before you do anything you want to line your mold all right guys uh, we will go on to the next steps be right back right, this is the second part of our how-to series to get started with uh, making soap here I here I have my scale something to measure my lie in a very very thick pitcher you need a thick plastic pitcher preferably one that's deep this is the one I always use you're going to need your sodium hydroxide I get my sodium hydroxide from Essential Depot. They've got the best prices, and this is food grade uh, sodium hydroxide, which is lye. And it's very poisonous, guys, so you need to watch out when you're working with this stuff. Um, you can buy it by the bulk on their website if you just go and Google Essential Depot and um, push in lye, then their lye will come up, and they're fairly cheap. Um, I know you can get lye at, like, say, a, a hardware store, but that kind of lye is the Drano, the drain opener lye, and this lye is much better. It's for, um, it's a food grade, so yeah, use this lye. The food grade lye is better. Okay, the next thing you're going to need to do, what I use is a mixture of aloe vera and well, there's something on it this is 100 percent organic certified natural um aloe vera gel um i either use the aloe vera gel 
or I use the aloe vera juice that you can get. Um, I got this offline off of a vitamin shop, but I usually get my aloe vera juice at Walmart, and it's like six bucks for a big old thing like this big. The next thing you're going to need is some distilled water. Definitely need distilled water. Uh, don't try to use water from your tap because that is a little bit too um, harsh. It's got chemicals and stuff in it that um, you just don't want in your soaps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out our lye. Oh, hold on. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I had a, a company. Somebody was coming to get a candle. But like I was saying, we need uh, something to measure our lye out with. So we have our container and we have our scale. You need a scale that's going to measure in ounces. Uh, this one measures in ounces, pounds, and um, grams. But when soaping, um, ounces is usually made. So for this recipe, um, we're going to turn our scale on with the container on it. That way it tears out the weight of the container. So, in this recipe, we need 6.7 ounces of lye. So, we're going to measure, and we're going to measure slowly. 6.7 ounces. You need your, you need your glasses on. And I should really be using gloves doing this. And I forgot my gloves. Six point seven ounces, right on the dot. And I forgot my gloves, but here's my oops, here's my safety goggles. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on. And I got my gloves. So let's put my gloves on. I forgot them, so my daughter reminded me. Safety is always first, guys. Safety is always first. So, I got my goggles on. I got my gloves on. Alright, we've measured out our lie. Let's set that to the side. And now we're going to measure out our aloe. And in this recipe, I need five ounces of aloe. So, our scale is teared out from the weight of the pitcher. It's at zero. And we're going to measure out five ounces. going to tear our scale out again and by doing that we're going to push this button and it's going to tear it out to zero. Now we're going to measure our distilled water. Now we need 13.9 ounces of distilled water. Alright, went over just a point but that's okay. Alright, now that we have our lye and our water measured out, let me get a spatula. Listen, will you go get me some soap? Now we need to add our lye and our water together. Never the other way around. You never add your water to your lye. That can cause a volcano eruption and lye will go everywhere and it will burn you. This lye in the form that it is now in the form that it's about to be in the water is extremely caustic. It will burn you. I suggest when you're mixing your lye that you do it under a ventilated in a ventilated area so you don't breathe it in or get a face mask. Usually when I measure my lye out with my water, I do it underneath my kitchen um, stove because at the top there's a vent there. So uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm not doing that, but I am going to stay far away from it. 
I'm not going to have it close to my face. And you're going to take the lye that you measured out and we're going to add it to our water. Add it slowly. Make sure you don't get none on the edges. Kind of tap it. Then take your spatula and get whatever was left in the bowl. So we get all the lye out. Don't want to leave any behind because we measured precisely. Alright, now, as soon as, as soon as you do that, I'm going to take this to the sink and wash it out immediately. Now, I use Tessa Silk. I use Tessa Silk in all of my um, soaps. This is what Tessa Silk looks like. It's just a silk fiber. Make sure you see it. And what I do is I kind of like to just shred it and tear it apart. And then you put it straight into your hot lye. Now you're going to take your spatula and you're going to stir this lye. And you're going to stir it until it becomes nice and clear. Right now it's cloudy. As you can see, it's cloudy because we just added it together. It's away from my face. I'm not breathing in the fumes. And we've got a heat resistant spatula. Now what happens when you add your lye to your waters, this is going to get extremely hot. The reaction that happens when you add these two together, the, the water is going to get somewhere up into 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So you never, you want to be extra cautious when you're making your lye. So we're just stirring it away from our face and we're going to stir it until it becomes clear or see-through. Once it's clear and you'll know that all of the lye crystals are dissolved. And uh, you can be able to tell also that the lye crystals are dissolved because you, you won't be able to fill it anymore at the bottom of your um, container. So just keep stirring. And then, then here in a little bit, in order to cool this lye mixture down, to have it cooled down to be able to mix with our order uh, oils, okay. we're going to put it inside of a water bath. And what that means is, is you're going to get a bigger bowl you're going to set this down inside the bigger bowl and you're going to put ice all around it and fill it up to about right here with cold water. And that's going to get the, the temperature of the lye down. Alright, so we have mixed our lye. The next step is mixing our oils. So let me get those prepared and I'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we need to do when uh, doing our soaps is we need to get our oils ready. And I'm going to, this is a basic recipe that I have came up with. It's one of the basic ones that I did when I, when I uh, was soaping. I've tweaked it a little bit to fit my needs, but this is just a basic recipe. It's easy, and it has a lot of good qualities to the soap. So, we're going to be using castor oil, uh, 76 degree coconut oil, and all that means is that it's coconut oil that melts at uh, uh, higher than 76 degrees. It's at room, it's solid at 76 degrees. We're going to be using sustainable palm oil, pumice olive oil, and shea butter. Now, um, I can, this is the coconut oil that you can get. You can get this coconut oil at Walmart or your local grocery store. It's uh, Lu Luana, 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 whatever you call it. But it's good coconut oil. And this is what I used when I first started soaping. This you can get at Walmart. You can get a, a set of two for like 10 bucks. Um, if not, just the single one is about six, seven dollars. And when you're first starting out, this size coconut oil is perfect for you. Uh, we're also going to be using olive oil. 
and this is my olive oil and it's pumice olive oil and I just keep refilling this bottle because I get my soap supplies from Soper's Choice. If you don't feel like you want to go to your local grocery store and pick up your oils, you can always go to Soper's Choice. They've got the best prices when it comes to carrier oils for your soaps. They have coconut oil, soybean oil, they have olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, rice bran oil, palm oil, um, beef tallow or lard if you want to use beef tallow and lard. Lard makes a very nice creamy soap. Um, they have every single oil that you could think of. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just kind of showing you what you can go and get at your local grocery store. Now, the castor oil, you might have a hard time finding um, at a grocery store. So, I would suggest you order it off of Soper's Choice online. Soper's Choice is also known as Columbus Foods. So, we've got our bowl, and I got this bowl at the Dollar Tree, guys. You don't have to have expensive soaping equipment. A lot of my soaping equipment has came from the Dollar Tree or from the dollar stores. So, we've got our scale out again, and we got our bowl. We're going to set our bowl on our scale, and we're going to turn it on, and it's going to tear out the, um, it's going to tear out the, me the, measurement of the bowl. We're going to first start by putting our coconut oil in. Coconut oil, 9.9. .9. So we already got five ounces in there. Let's go till we get nine. There's eight. 9.1. Nope, that was a little bit too much. Not enough. Alright, there we go. See, I would have goofed if I wouldn't have looked at my recipe again. You always got to look at your recipe, guys. Make sure you double check your recipe. Okay, now that we have the correct amount of coconut oil, now let's move on to the castor oil, which is five. Five ounces. So we're going to tear out our scale again, which it goes back to zero. And then we're going to add our castor oil till we get to five ounces. And this comes out kind of thick, so you got to watch it. All right, five ounces. All right, there's our castor oil. Now, the next thing we need is palm oil. So, we're going to tear out our scale again. And we're going to get palm oil, which is 12.4 ounces. So, I've got my palm oil over here. And I'm just going to put it in until I get to 12 ounces. 12.4 ounces. always going to get it on your fingers which is okay there's 10 ounces a little bit more to go there's 12 so 12.4 there's 12.3 All right, that's good. So there's our palm oil. All right, the next thing on our list is olive oil. And we need one pound, 1.4 ounces. So that's pretty much one pound, 1.4 ounces. So let's get our olive oil. We're going to tear out our scale again, and we're going to measure one pound, 1.4 ounces. And 
1.14. There we go. Now, next thing we need to do is our shea butter, but we're going to do our shea butter a little bit different. I've already got my shea butter in this extra container, and there's a reason for that. We need, for this recipe, four ounces of shea butter. And you can get shea butter at your local health food store. If you have a health food store around, they should sell shea butter. Uh, if not, you can order it offline. And I don't get my shea butter at Soper's Choice. I get my shea butter off of a gentleman off eBay. It's 100% organic natural shea butter. And um, I will leave down uh, a link to his eBay store or the shea butter itself down in the description below. It is pretty cheap for as much as you get. You get 10 pounds of it. I don't remember the price, but it's really, really cheap. But the reason why I have it separate is because when we heat these oils up, we don't want to heat the shea butter up with the oils. We want to heat the oils and then let the heat from the melted oils melt the shea butter. So never put your shea butter into direct heat. It kind of breaks down its nutrients and it's not as effective. So from here, what you can do is what I do is I pop this in the microwave for a few minutes and I make sure everything is melted. My lye water is sitting in an ice bath so I can get it good and cold because you want, when you're soaping, you want to soap at room temperature. So you got to get that temperature down on your lye. It's, same goes for your oils. You want your oils to be at room temperature. So I'm only going to pop this in the microwave for a few minutes. Again, I am going to go over this recipe again for you. Castor oil, 5 ounces. 76 degree coconut oil, 9.9 ounces. Palm oil, 12.4 ounces. Palmas olive oil, 18.35 uh, ounces or 1.14 pounds. And shea butter, 4 ounces. And when you go, this is how I calculate my recipes. I go to SoapCalc.net. I don't know if you guys can see that there. That's SoapCalc. And you plug in your, your oils and the percentages that you want to use your oils at. Like on this recipe, I'm using 10% castor oil, 20% coconut oil, 25% palm oil, 37% olive oil, and 8% shea butter. Um, this is going to, and then down here, in this little part, gives you the properties of your bar. So, for this recipe, my hardness on the bar is 38, which is good because it's supposed to be in between 29 and 54. The cleansing is 14. Um, you don't want to use too much coconut oil because it can be drying to the skin. So I never use more than 20% on my recipes for coconut oil. I find that m anything more than 20% will dry out your skin. Okay, and for conditioning, we've got 59, which it should be in between 44 and 69. Bubbly, we've got 23, which it should be in between 14 and 46. Creamy, we've got 34, which should be in between 16 and 48. And then your iodine and INS. Your iodine is at a 60, and it needs to be between 41 and 70. And your INS needs to be, uh, it's 145, and it needs to be between 136 and 165. This is going to make a 4.7 ounce, 4.7 pound, um, 
log of soap. That's what size my mold is. So let me check on my oils. All right, guys, we are back. And we're done with this for now. We don't need the scale. This is super duper hot. I left it in there a little bit longer than what I should have. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is putting this in the freezer to try to get the uh, temperature to come down. I'm now going to put in my um, shea butter. Like I said before, we don't want to put the shea butter directly into the oils to melt them. We want the hot oils to melt our shea butter. So we have our hot oils in our jug here. And we're just going to uh, set here and stir until our shea butter is melted. It shouldn't take too long because this is so hot. But if you ever get your oils too hot, they're really not going to calm down on their own. You're going to have to put them in the freezer to get the temperature to come down. Because you've already got your lye mixture setting in ice water. So you don't want your lye mixture to come down to temperature and then have your oils too hot. Then you won't be able to pour them together to start this the, the process of um, making soap. So my oils were so hot that my shea butter is almost all melted. You just sit here with your little spoon or you can use a spatula, it really doesn't matter. Alright, my shea butter's melted. Now I'm going to put my oils in the freezer to cool off. And then when I come back, we'll start talking about additives. Alright guys, let me get all the additives ready and together and we'll be right back. 